John chapter 21, and I have a thought in there that I'd like to just grab. You guys ever, uh, you guys ever been stuck? Mm -hmm. Steve, have you ever been stuck when you're four buying? (laughs) Well, today uh, we went up to my dad's and we got our tractor and we brought it back down to our property. And uh, Wyatt was getting after it. It's a John Deere 210. It's like a full size skip loader and Wyatt's doing a lot of the tractor work and stuff. And the next thing I know, he calls me and uh, he's like, "Uh, hey dad, um, I got the tractor stuck. And and I'm like, where? And so I'm like on the couch, you know, I'm chilling. I'm watching the Padres beat the Diamondbacks and life is good. And made me get up off the couch and we get the excursion and we go out there with a chain and I get out there and I'm like, Mm, this thing is like stuck stuck um i don't think it's gonna work maybe if we get like three or four diesel four-wheel drives in a row maybe um so christopher has a yankum rope and those things are sweet and so um i had wyatt call christopher christopher's like oh we're on our way to the basketball courts to go play basketball i'll meet you at the end of the road and then he calls us and he's like hey um Justin is stuck and he called me to see if I could help him get out but do you think you could just take this rope and go help him get out he's got like a full-size Dodge diesel dually and he's he was trying to get around the back of his property to get his uh his like chip and seal trailer like that it's a huge trailer and so he got stuck in the mud so we went over there and we pulled him out and uh, then we came back. <laughs> Leanne went to town to get groceries today. And when she's coming back in the driveway, she sees what we're doing. And she just pulls up to us and she's like shaking her head. Like, <laughs> like, are you serious? And then she gets out and she walks up and sees how bad it really is. And she's like, why? You know, so we, we had tried and we hooked up uh, his diesel, uh, the excursion and we're trying to pull it, it's not moving. So I called another neighbor and uh, there was gonna be a dozer coming up our road this next week, but it's not coming up our road. So we're praying about uh, what to do to get that thing out. But uh, getting stuck is not very fun. And I started thinking about tonight's message and a lot of times we get stuck in our spiritual life because our focus is on the wrong thing when we're focusing on christ is when we can have peace in the middle of a storm and i want to just read a few verses out of john 21 Um, if you look at john 21 it's towards the end and i don't even have my bible tonight this is why it's um so let me find it here um i would like to go uh to verse number 17 okay verse number 17 and this is you know christ has already resurrected peter had denied him they were out fishing christ is on the shore he's making some fish and uh, he the disciples end up coming to shore and jesus is asking peter if he loves him and he asked him three different times if he loved him you guys remember that story because Peter denied Christ three different times. And in John 21 and verse 17, he says this, He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verse 18, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, Thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. So I want to really quick point out the fact that this is right before Jesus is going to ascend up into heaven, right? He's about to leave the disciples in the physical form, and he's 
been with them for a three three years now and he's discipled them and he's trained them and they've gone out and peter has fallen flat on his face he's denied the lord he has showed his flesh side and god is still saying i'm gonna use you i want you to feed my sheep i want you to feed my lambs you're uh and then he says to peter when you were young you kind of did what you want what you wanted when you were young you walked where you wanted to you did what you wanted to but i'm telling you as a matter of fact that when you're old people will take you where you don't want to go they're going to bind your hands and he explained to him how he would die as a martyr for christ he basically told peter right here that as you follow me as you follow me and you take up your cross you're going to be crucified when you were younger you did what you wanted you had less responsibility life was a lot freer there was you were carefree you didn't have the weight that you have now but now and in your older age i'm telling you that as you follow christ uh you're going to be carried you're, it says uh you're gonna when thou shalt be old thou shalt stretch forth thy hands another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not and this he spake signifying what death he should die and i want you to look at this jesus says to him at the very end follow me follow me in verse 20 look at peter's response then peter turning about seeth the disciple whom jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said lord which is he that betrayeth thee he's talking about john who's writing this gospel so imagine this jesus tells peter how he's gonna die for him he tells peter follow me peter and peter turns about he turns and he sees john and peter in verse 21 it says peter seeing him saith to jesus lord and what shall this man do okay i want i want you to just think about this thought with me because this is what i thought about when i was when we were stuck today and then and then justin stuck and i've been stuck a hundred times i have a million stories about getting stuck but spiritually speaking i believe that we get stuck in our spiritual life when we just like peter jesus says to him follow me keep your eyes on me follow me hey it's not going to be easy but it's going to be fruitful i want you to follow me and we immediately turn and look and say what about so and so or what they're not hey i'm here all the time what about them and it's just like peter it's like jesus is right in his face saying follow me and, and and it's funny to me because uh the personality of peter is just peter is peter no matter if it was with jesus or what you know he's gonna cut the dude's ear off he's gonna cuss he's gonna deny the lord he's gonna it's like hey peter was just real and jesus is like you're my you're my guy i'm gonna use you and he's like peter when you're old you're gonna be crucified that's how you're gonna die a martyr and he says, follow me. And Peter's like, what about John? <laughs> He's like, what, what's he going to do? Like, what's his plan? He did, you just told me how I'm going to die. What, what, what's John's deal? And automatically, his focus went off of Christ saying, hey, follow me. And it went to someone else. And I think first and foremost, we get stuck in our spiritual life when our eyes come off of Christ. I am first and foremost called to be a follower of Christ. I'm called first and foremost to follow Christ and then love my wife and my children and work on my four walls in my house uh, to, have to set my house in order as we follow Christ. As we individually follow Christ, this church and other churches like it will flourish will thrive 
because it's not like, well, what are they doing? It's just like, no, we love everyone where they're at in their journey because everyone's in a different spot. Everyone has a different background. Everyone has a different upbringing. Everyone has a different situation going on. We're all made up different up here. We're all made up different right here. And Jesus knows every single person's situation. And when he said to Peter, follow me, and Peter said, what about him? Look at what Christ said to him. It's crazy. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, verse 21, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Isn't that so cool? Jesus is straight up saying to Peter, Dude, don't worry about it. What is, if he tarries till I come, what is that to thee? In other words, he's saying, as an example, he's like, if he doesn't die until I return again, what is that to you? Follow thou me. He straight up says, what is that to thee? And that saying right there, that saying, what is that to thee, is so cool. Like, dude, it's like it, there's other verses in the Bible where it says, don't be a busybody in other people's uh, matters. You know, God has a plan for your life. It's called Jesus in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27. Let's turn to one more place. Would you go to 1 Timothy? And we'll close with this. 1 Timothy, I want to say it's chapter 1. I'll let you know here shortly. No, it's chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1 says this, I therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You realize God wants us to pray for our president? Uh, our country is in a mess. But God's will for me is that I pray for our authority, our presidents, our governors, our mayors, our police officers. It's, it's my responsibility as a Christian to pray for them. Why? Because, look, God wants us. It says... Uh, he wants us that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I want to stop right there, but I just want to say this. Uh, if you're stuck in your spiritual life you're not growing you're in a spot where it's just flat you're in a spot where you feel like you could take it or leave it i want to just encourage you to get your eyes on christ because christ is never going to let you down i'm going to let you down i promise i will let you down you will let me down you will let your spouse down you will let your kids down kids you will let your parents down we're imperfect but Christ is not. And so when he says, hey, follow me, what's, what is that to you? Don't worry about, don't worry about that guy. He's going to follow me too. We know that, you know, uh, John, it was rumored, and you can read later, it was rumored that John was going to live forever, basically. He wasn't going to die until Christ returned. Well, that wasn't true. Christ was just giving an example and saying, hey, if I want to do this with his life, it's different than your life. Like your life is, might not look like my life. Your direction might be different than my direction, right? And, and you can have different likes and different interests and you can have uh, different gifts and different talents and different abilities and different resources and serve the same God and follow the same Christ. 
and have the same Holy Spirit to where, you know, you could be living in Kerman, but drive up here and we could run into each other and we have that common bond in Christ. Like, what? How? Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Like, and, and we can come to church 20 minutes late and it's not like the world's going to fall apart. You know what I mean? Like, God knows what he's doing. And he says, what is that to thee? Like, hey, so-and-so didn't come to church today. What is that to thee? Pray for them and love on them. But I want you to keep your eyes on me. I want you to enjoy me. We know that Christ is our life, right? Christ is our life. Colossians chapter 2 says that we are complete in him. You cannot add to complete. When you have Christ, you have everything. So I want to encourage the adults and especially the young people to understand, look, we, we love trucks. We love toys. We love playing in the dirt. We love tools. We love hunting and fishing and all these things that God has given us on this earth to enjoy. But when we realize that the meat is Jesus Christ, we enjoy the other stuff so much more because it's not like, hey, we're stuck. We're still stuck, but whatever. You know, what is that to thee? Get over it. It's going to handle itself. Love God. Go to church love each other and enjoy life lead a quiet and peaceable life because that's what god wants and look there was people here this morning um that haven't stepped foot in this church for over 20 years and god's doing a i want to start crying but he's doing a crazy work in their heart We were gone this last Wednesday, and I got a text from my dad just saying, hey, so-and-so and so-and-so were here. And he said, you know, you don't see stuff like that happen unless you don't quit. 20-plus yeah. years. I think my dad's been the pastor for almost 30 years, almost three decades. At the funeral that we had on Friday for Wilbur, who's with the Lord now, uh, one of the guys stood up and was just, he was talking about Wilbur and his life. And one of the things he said was, he turned around to our pastor and he just said, I want to thank pastor for just loving us and being here for us. That guy's never been a part of our church. He's never, I believe he's accepted the Lord at one time, but there's something with following Christ. There's something with just saying, you know what? Everybody else might not be doing ex it exactly how we're doing it, and that's okay. It's okay. Um, I might do something different at home, or I might, you know, raise my kids this way or that way, but what is that to thee? Let's follow Christ. As the heads of our home, we say like, hey, as for me and my house, let's serve the Lord, like Joshua said. You know, as the moms and the grandmas, uh, you guys are the Loises and the whatever that other lady's name was, Eunice. 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 You guys, you know, the Bible has so much to say about the influence of the moms and the grandmas in the children's hearts. There's a tenderness in the kids that grow up under this right here. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. You know what? I've departed. I, I grew up with this. You know, I departed. I went and did my thing. And God has a way of saying, hey, psst, remember me? And sometimes it's like, hey, remember me? You know, it's, diff <laughs> it's different for everybody. But you know what? When you have the truth and Christ is like, hey, follow me follow me what is that to be i'm telling you i'm gonna be your life if you'll follow me i'm gonna be your life i'm gonna show you things that you've never seen never experienced and then like we just read in first timothy 2 he will his will is that all men would be saved you know what was what we what we take with us when when we die it's not the razor with sweet hand controls in it it's not the rifles it's people it's people so we got to 
keep our priorities right and we love people where they're at and follow Christ. And he does the rest. He does the rest. Let's go ahead and close our eyes, eyes, bow our heads, and we'll dismiss in prayer, okay? Father in heaven, I love you, Lord. I thank you for being a God that is not in a box. You can do whatever you want, when you want, how you want, with whoever you want. Uh, we know that you're in control. We know that you have a plan for us, that you love us, that you gave your life for us so that you could live in us, so that you could live through us. Lord, I pray that tonight we would just learn from John 21, that we would take that example of uh, Christ saying to Peter, hey, what is that to thee? Like, don't worry about your brother. Don't worry about what my plan is for their life. It might not look like the plan I have for your life. And help us to love you with our whole heart. Please dismiss us um, with safety as we go home. And please heal our pastor. Bring him back, Lord, on Sunday or Wednesday. And Jesus' name I pray. Lord, I thank you for Steve and Glenda, Lord, and them coming up here. I know it wasn't an accident. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. All right, you guys are just